The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. agriculture here and I am joined by Megan Van Kosky who is a research scientist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. We are at the Soils and Crops Conference here in Saskatoon and Megan did a presentation on her pretty proactive work with uh, canola flower midge. Um, so kind of what is the like origin of this work in Saskatchewan and like what is the difference between like sweet midge and canola flower midge? Right, so uh, canola flower midge is something that we discovered on the prairies in 2016 while we were doing work on what we thought was sweet midge, or what my colleague Dr. Boyd Morey thought was sweet midge and the work that he was doing. Uh, so over the course of his first summer in Saskatoon, he noticed that this what we thought was sweet midge was not acting like sweet midge should, and that led us to make the discovery that it was actually a completely different species. So they're very similar, they're uh, very closely related, Related. Um, but what we've found is that uh, canola flower midge, the new species, does much less damage to canola than sweet midge could possibly do. And so that's kind of led us into having to develop a research program to learn about this species and to try to quantify its potential impact on canola production on the prairies. Yeah. And what are some of like the big differences between the two species? Right. So what we've found so far is, um, so we know, or we're quite hopeful and quite confident to a certain extent that Swede midge is not present in Western Canada. So that's the first big difference is we have canola flower midge here, um, Contarinia brassicola, and in Ontario they have Swede midge, uh, Contarinia nasturtii. Uh, so that's the first really big difference. The second big difference that we found is that the two species use different parts of their host plant for laying eggs and for larval development. So the Swede midge will lay eggs on any growing point on the plant. And so for broccoli, that would be where the head is starting to develop, which reduces, which results in no yield for that infected plant. For canola, it means that they're going to potentially attack that growing material that's going to turn into the different canola racemes on the plant, which usually has a primary raceme, but then can have all of these secondary and tertiary racemes off the side. And so Swede midge will attack all of those growing points, which can also significantly reduce canola yield. What we found for canola flower midge in Western Canada is that the Adults really only lay eggs into the flowers that are starting to open or just before the flowers are ready to open. That results in what we're calling a galled flower that has larvae developing inside it. And so individual flowers are affected instead of the origin point of the whole raceme. Uh, so it's much, we, we expect to see a much lower yield impact for canola flower midge as compared to sweet midge. And that would be the second really big difference that we're seeing between these two species. Yeah, so it sounds like a win for Western Canada with having less of a yield impact, supposedly. <laughs> but um, so what uh, this work is like pretty proactive so like what are the next um, kind of steps and like what is like to come from this and like where are you guys headed next? Right. So right now um, we've wrapped up a, uh, two different projects where we were looking to figure out what is the distribution of the species, uh, when is it active throughout the growing season, um, how many generations does it have, questions like that. They're really important basic biology questions. Uh, we also did some work to identify a sex pheromone that the female Swede midge produced to attract males to them and uh, Dr. Boyd Morey at the University of Alberta has a graduate student who's working to perfect a pheromone monitoring system for canola flower midge using that synthetic sex pheromone. Uh, so those are kind of some of the things that we've done so far and are working on. Um, if we continue to do work on canola flower midge, uh, which is important but maybe not so important as other species because so far its economic impact does seem to be pretty low. Uh, things that we would really like to look into more are what is the potential yield impact of this species? How is that density dependent? We've seen some fields with lots of canola flower midge and others with very little. Um, but then we also know that we, we have parasitoids that are attacking canola flower midge on the prairies and so we'd like to know 
how often that parasitism happens, what kind of impact that has on the population. We've also talked about seeing if those parasitoids could attack Swede midge, which does not have parasitoids in Western Canada or in Canada at all, since Swede midge isn't even in Western Canada. So we've got a lot of very interesting questions growing out of the new species that we've discovered and the work we've done so far. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me about this today. And I'm sure we'll hear from you again soon. For sure. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks for for chatting.